Good afternoon. Thank you so much, everybody, joining us today in person and all the people who are online uh, remotely. So, Director of Grand Round, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, uh, Dr. Erin Good. She is an Associate Professor of Clinical Radiology and Radiological Sciences and uh, Director of Arts and Program Director of Diagnostic uh, Radiology Residency in Vanderbilt University. She is with us today to talk about fostering creativity, collaboration, and problem solving in radiology through the arts. Dr. Cook uh, graduated with Soma Comblada from um, Wake Forest University with a minor in uh, studio art. She got her uh, medical degree from Baylor College of Medicine and then um, finished her residency in um, Virginia Mason Medical Center in Seattle and MRI fellowship in New Orleans. She went back to uh, Virginia Mason Medical Center as a faculty and worked there for six years, which during that time she was the head of the radiology section and a co-program director of a radiology residency program for three years. In 2020, Dr. Uh, Cook joined Vanderbilt University as an abdominal imager, and she appointed as a director of art. In uh, 2022, last year, she became a program director for diagnostic radiology residency program in Vanderbilt University. And because of her passion and um, background in art, and also an interest in education, she's been a champion advocating art and radiology and bringing art to uh, the radiological spaces. She has started initiatives, many initiatives, and been in a task force, including 2021 ACR task force to integrate art in the radiological societies and conferences. Without any further ado, I'm going to invite you to the podium. Thank you so very much for accepting my invitation. And it's a great pleasure to have you here, and we're all eager to hear your talk. My pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, I just want to check. Uh, microphone? No microphone? Uh, microphone, microphone, okay. You never know. It kind of depends on the acoustics. So um, it is an absolute pleasure to be here um, with you all today. And I just want to start off by uh, a huge thank you um, to everyone in the department um, and uh, uh, especially um, to Dr. Johnson and to Kevin for all of the um, uh, touring, the welcome, and um, it's been just a pleasure being here on campus. I always learn things from uh, visiting other spaces, so thank you for having me here. Um, art really is for everyone. It's not just for those of us who think that we um, are artistic in some type of way. This is something that's for us as physicians, but also for our patients and for everyone in our community. So we're going to be talking a little bit about how art relates to radiology. Um, I think a lot of people think that there's not much connection there. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, how it can help us with some of these initiatives that we already have um, that are important to us that we recognize across the field of radiology, like supporting DEI, innovation and collaboration, communication, patient-centered care, um, how the arts can really help us. And then talk about some ways, some practical ways that we can embed art in our work in medicine. So um, we're gonna call this Rad Art One-on-One, -on -one, uh, as, as Kevin mentioned, and I think that's actually a pretty accurate descriptor. Um, this is gonna be fairly playful um, in a number of ways, um, and please don't hesitate to interrupt me if you have a question. I like to keep, keep things very informal, so if you need to get coffee, food, anything, um, please just get up um, and do what you need to do. Um, also, just regarding permissions, uh, all the work where it's not credited, it's uh, various, paintings and drawings that I've done over the years. So that's why there'd be no citation on those um, particular slides. I'm actually gonna start off um, before we jump into kind of art and medicine and how that relates to radiology with a little bit of background because one of the areas where I get the most questions about um, is actually how did I end up here um, in this position as director of arts at Vanderbilt? Um, so we're just gonna kind of get, get those questions um, hopefully answered right off from the start. Um, so it's around 1986, which I guess dates me. Um, back then I had a deep love of art. I love painting, those are some oil pastels, as well as running. 
Um, so my interests were pretty fixed at the time. My sister did go on to become um, a mother of three. So it's kind of uh, a, a foreshadowing of things to come, I guess. Uh, I was asked in second grade to make a drawing of what I thought I'd become. Partially correct, but no, I did not go into ENC, obviously. So not totally right. But I did keep painting. I kept running. Um, and I found radiology, almost went into dermatology, but I found uh, the path of righteousness um, and uh, I've never regretted it at all. And as with, I think, a number of our hobbies and interests in medicine, the painting side of things, I really kept pretty separate for a very long time. I got asked to do some uh, illustrations, um, some artwork for our um, College of Medicine. I was at Baylor uh, annual yearbook. So I did some things that way, but for the most part, pretty separate. Until I moved to New Orleans, which maybe is no surprise for my fellowship year. And there was a little bit more overlap, a little bit more uh, flexibility and integration <laughs> with some of these things. And I decided, because I moved there, not knowing anyone except for the program director, my one friend who I knew there at the time moved away at the exact same time I moved there, um, that I needed to branch out and meet some people. So I invited some of my very new friends over to my home. And we had what we call the painting party um, these days. I pulled out some large canvases there and told them to paint whatever they wanted on the canvases. And this is what they came up with. Uh, and the task was after this party, I would take those images and create something out of that. So this is what we ended up with. Um, the paintings actually are in the home of uh, one of the um, people from that event who we remain friends to this day, um, she's a pediatric radiologist from the St. Louis area. And, uh, and we all have kept in contact, and maybe it's not because of the art itself, but it's from those connections and those experiences doing something different that really made me realize how, uh, how useful those types of events can be while outside of the typical space of medicine. So moving forward here to 2020, and I got recruited to come to Vanderbilt to start a program combining art and radiology. Um, so kind of what happened in the interim to make that change? It doesn't seem like a natural kind of thing to really combine the two. This is one of my cats here uh, who likes snow, um, bizarrely. Um, so it seems a little strange like that, not a normal type of connection. Um, one of the um, things that I want to point out is that I am very skeptical of lots of online connections and social media on the one hand. On the other hand, it actually has proved to be a very useful tool and this is part of the reason that I'm standing here. Um, for my art side of things, I uh, realized to gain inspiration and to meet other people in the art world that it was really helpful to be online, had a website, um, got an Instagram, because that was the place to be. And I, at the time, was also a program director once, at the same time I was getting involved in these uh, arts endeavors. Again, these were very separate things in my life at the time. But because I was a new PD, I was told you need to join the APDR, um, the Association of Program Directors in Radiology. Um, I didn't really think much of it, um, but I did because uh, I was told to do it. Uh, it actually ended up being great. Um, met um, many fantastic colleagues and made many great friendships through the APDR. Uh, and because of that, I started attending the annual AUR meeting. And that's when something kind of special happened, which maybe some of you have had this happen before. Uh, I didn't know many people. I was coming from a non-academic um, institution. I felt kind of like an outsider. I was standing there um, with my best friend, Jenny, um, at the time. And uh, a few radiologists who happened to know her came up to her and said, hey, Jenny, do you want to be on this committee? We'd like you to be on the committee. Um, for electronic communications for the APDR. And she said, no, but I think Aaron wants to. <laughs> so somehow then I got put on this committee that I didn't necessarily, you know, exactly like, you know, totally want to do, but I agreed to do it because of my uh, background um, with uh, websites and social media as an artist. And I was told um, behind this committee that I had to join Twitter. Um, didn't really want to, but that was going to be a waste of time. Um, and I found actually that there was a huge community on Twitter, um, amongst radiologists and it actually was a very welcoming community. So, uh, our chair at Vanderbilt at the time, Dr. Reed Omery, um, uh, you may know, uh, he's very forward thinking, has done a lot of things, um, 
in spaces that maybe traditionally radiology was not considered to be involved in. So he reached out to me and said, hey, I uh, hear you're also an artist. Uh, why don't you come over and take a look at Vanderbilt? So that's how that all started. It was a series of, um, I don't think you could say unfortunate events. I'd like to say unfortunate events um, that led to this. Um, so I just want to point out kind of the serendipity of some of these things. Um, and some of it is, I think, um, kind of rooted in that openness to trying things that comes with um, the arts and also just pointing out that networking itself is not a bad thing, that sometimes those weak ties, those kind of chance encounters can really lead to a lot. Um, so serendipity, things that change your perspective, these all come along with the arts and as well as a realization of our interconnectedness. So what has this role looked like? We're gonna talk a lot more about this soon, um, but basically it's kind of two areas. We have activities at Vanderbilt, which we'll talk about more later, as well as activities outside of Vanderbilt, such as with our national societies. So we'll get back to that. And now we're gonna head on to the, what does art have to do with medicine at all? Again, it may seem kind of strange or kind of silly. This is my dog looking at our neighbor's uh, Thanksgiving setup, um, which is a little bit unusual. Um, just like art and medicine may seem a little bit unusual. So why am I showing some rolls of toilet paper? Because maybe you're a little bit like me, you're out there in the community, and you notice like strange things. I'm like, you know, why is it like Dr. Toilet Paper? Which of course it's not, it stands for like something else, like more dollars or something like that. But things like this always catch my eye. Maybe you're the same sort of way where you notice things that maybe other people don't notice. Cause that's basically what we're supposed to do as radiologists, we're very skilled noticers. Medicine as a whole also has uh, come to greater appreciation of some of these skills, observation, perception, and how the arts can really help us um, in improving those skills. Um, some uh, medical schools have really started more, more formal recognition and integration of it, um, like Florida State here. Many of us, I think even um, dating from way back, um, have manuals like this, um, coffee stained here, um, where uh, there are various drawings, maybe there's some uh, art that you remember from Netter back in um, the days of anatomy class. Um, and that's kind of what we think of when we think of art uh, within medical education historically. But over the past uh, decade or so, there really has been a lot more formal integration of art into medical education, especially for medical students. There are even review articles written about this. There's been formal recognition by the AAMC. Um, they have a great newsletter actually that they put out um, that you can subscribe to. Lots of great ideas there about ways, practical ways to integrate art into education. And then also the uh, WHO and some other global organizations have formally recognized um, the role that arts can play in supporting health and wellness. What about radiology? Um, our radiology societies have been a little bit slower, but they're catching up now, especially over the past few years. Um, all these societies have had <coughs> some type of integration. Um, some are much more on the virtual level, like SAR here. Um, has posted some galleries online of radiologists submitted art, as has the ACR. Um, for our ACR subcommittee, um, which I've been very active in, um, which was founded just a few years ago, um, we have done uh, a number of exhibitions uh, tied to the annual meeting in Washington, DC. The first year um, was a virtual uh, exhibit, but we did get a number of clicks. You can see though, of course, being virtual is not quite as engaging as in person. This is basically what the platform looked like. Um, but in 2022, we were able to um, get back to in-person style of things, and that was fantastic. So we had people um, attending those meetings um, with the ACR about policy and advocacy for patients. And then in between the sessions, they could stop at our booth and look at some art. Um, and it was kind of a focal point um, right there near the registration desk. Um, and 2023, we had a similar type of setup, um, had some sculpture even that was brought by one of the radiologists. And uh, we found we had a lot of engagement also by having a art donation event too. Um, Dr. Davidoff here, radiologist up in the Boston area, donated one of his pieces rather than uh, say raffled off for money, we actually raffled it off for ideas. So we asked people to submit an idea of how they could see art being integrated into patient care and radiology. Um, and then somebody has to take it home. Uh, for the ACR, we've been trying to brainstorm ways that we can use art to support patient and family-centered care as part of the PFCC. 
Um, so we've made out of the radiologist art with permission from the artist, we've made some coloring pages um, that can be put into pediatric spaces, say when the patients are waiting to be scanned. And uh, we're thinking about some other ways that we could put art into patient spaces and use some of these natural resources that we have to provide resources. So more to come on that from a national level. Other societies like the AUR, Association of University Radiologists, past couple of years has integrated art to some degree, um, just a little bit in 2022 and a lot more in 2023 if you had the chance to uh, go to Austin. We had even a talent show. There were drawing sessions, um, poetry. Uh, There's something there for everyone. Again, kind of a nice little break from some of the other scientific parts of the meeting. So the point of this, again, is not to replace the scientific nature of radiology, but to support it. And uh, Arsene also has had some pilot um, sessions um, using art to have improved conversations. Um, there have been a few art societies, excuse me, a few radiology societies that have sponsored art competitions. Um, there's one right now, actually. If you're interested, I think they're done with submissions, but you can go on now and, um, and rank your favorite um, submissions of art. Um, so check that out um, on the RSNA page. So all this sounds like stuff like, okay, that's great. You know, if you're already interested in art, um, you know, but, but this is really going to do anything for my life. I, you know, I, I mostly won't like want to read studies. What's really the connection here? It still seems like art's kind of superficial just for the, those people who are actually interested in it. Um, is there really any relation of art to radiology itself? Radiology, when our inner spaces, they are kind of like this in general, right? Um, I just did a, a little bit of partial tour and I saw some spaces that were somewhat similar, um, maybe uh, a little bit bland, not much going on for design, um, except for maybe some signs telling you to stay away. Um, uh, it's not really generally uh, spaces that we have much art going on, except for maybe some stock art and waiting rooms, um, maybe in teaching, we had some signs, little drawings, um, in our presentations, uh, but could there be more here really connecting uh, the two areas? So we're gonna go back uh, further, centuries back actually. Um, this is um, the Cathedral in Florence, Italy. Uh, it, I highly recommend if you happen to get the chance to go there, touring the cathedral is quite spectacular. Um, really some neat paintings showcasing uh, the amazing grasp that these artists had on anatomy which I think many of us know from the time, um, Michelangelo, of course, Leonardo da Vinci, fantastic artist, but also great anatomist. A lot of connection at that time also in other areas between the arts, ways of looking at things, consideration of optics, and the, um, the overlap between the sciences um, and medicine and art was much more fluid at that time. Fast forward to radiology, um, much more recent than that, right? So when Rankin discovered uh, the x-ray in 1895, there was, of course, um, a lot of conversation about this in science and in medicine, but actually there was equally amount of conversation about it in the art world. People uh, within a couple months actually were starting to use x-rays um, in the realm of art and photography um, to really come explore what this new thing could do. Uh, example here is um, the photochemist um, from Austria, Eden Valenta, they, um, made a number of radiographs um, of animals, of fish, things around the household. You can kind of imagine them like wandering around and saying, hey, like, look at this, it's really cool um, to check out what's inside there. And yes, the human form. Um, so it was very much a time of exploration and it became integrated um, even more with some uh, prominent artists you may recognize more from their photography, um, like Matt right here. Um, so. Back in that time, back at the birth of radiology, there really was uh, a lot more recognition that there's overlap between the two, art, science, medicine, and radiology specifically. But I know people are like, okay, you know, I'm way too busy these days. I don't really care about this. What's it really gonna do for me? That's kind of ancient history at this point. It's like hundred years later now. Um, maybe you saw this plunger earlier. Um, it was with the, uh, the, my display of running shoes. Uh, but if not, I'm just pointing out there are things here that are embedded, right, in various things, or maybe we're not paying attention, but they're there all the time. 
Um, we are paid to notice things. Our duty is to notice things. We have to be observing things all the time or the list will really crush us. So could we better be better at this as radiologists, at preserving, at per perceiving things, at observing things, at pattern recognition, which is so important? It's really easy to um, say, look at a bunch of spoons and recognize that they're all spoons right away, but maybe it takes a second longer just to recognize that um, the pattern there on the utensils is all the same pattern. Um, so could we be better at doing that? It takes time to learn these search patterns. Um, so we all know if you see a little bit of subcutaneous emphysema here, you want to look closer and see if there a tiny apical pneumothorax. We get trained to use these search patterns. Are the ways that we could teach these skills better and be more effective at our jobs? So many errors in radiology are based on perception or not perceiving something that we need to be perceiving. Um, so we have room for improvement. It's really incumbent on us as a specialty to uh, continuously work on improving that. For the arts, that is something that we are also doing all the time. So um, took a photo here at the Museum of Glass, that's in Tacoma, Washington, Dale Chihuly's works are there. And I just thought it was kind of like a really cool um, little display, so I wanted to do a watercolor of it. To make the watercolor, I had to really break down the component elements from the photograph and figure out how those layers were gonna fit together. And this is something that we're doing also with radiology. We have a complex set of images we're looking at and we have to break it down and figure out really how those things are fitting together and analyze um, what is happening there. Um, what is the whole from each of those component pieces? There have been a number of studies um, in medicine in general and also in radiology, um, seeing what sessions exposing um, medical students, residents especially, um, two art sessions can do for their skills in observation and perception. Example of one of these um, is this publication, JCR, where uh, uh, first year radiology residents were shown a series of radiographs. And then they went to art museum, had a guided fine art session, learning how to analyze um, a painting, and then went back and had a post-test uh, looking at another set of radiographs. And there was actually measurable improvements on their ability to find the abnormality on those radiographs after just a single art session. Um, it's things like when you're examining a piece of artwork, uh, you know, do you see here, there's actually some, there's an edge of the film finding, there's some running shoes there at the very bottom. So in art too, you kind of have to look at the whole piece to figure out what's going on. So those are the kind of skills that we actually can show measurable benefit. So looking at things, breaking it down, as an artist, as a painter, that's what I am frequently doing when I'm putting things together, thinking about forming a complex um, painting. It's kind of like our complex cases. What are the things that are, are going into that to build up, to make that image? Has anyone figured out what this is based off of? Maybe something MSK. It's actually a bunch of lines taken from radiographs of a wrist film that were superimposed. So those lines actually underpin the painting. So what I'm doing is taking things that we're doing in radiology, um, looking at the films, using the lines to create paintings. And you really have to break things down in radiology to be able to build it back together to build up a story. At the same time, because our jobs are fairly complicated, we have to be noticing all these details. There are some details where we don't see them very frequently. Um, some some material where maybe you'll only see it once in your career, but you have to be ready um, to notice those things because that make, could make a real difference for the patient. Um, and trying to figure out how this um, details fit into the big picture can be really challenging at the times. For art also, a lot of what we do when we're observing art and trying to figure out what's going on is to figure out, do the component parts actually contribute to the whole? What is the story that they're trying to tell? How do you get the big picture? Is this amoebas I'm looking at, or is it a landscape? It actually is an era view um, of a landscape that's been abstracted. Um, but you can't necessarily tell that. Art is complicated. It lives in that area of uncertainty where we have to analyze, or at least attempt to analyze, and try to figure out what the artist is trying to communicate. Just as when we have a very challenging case, we don't necessarily know what the images are trying to tell us. How do we go about trying to figure that out? Well, for radiology, often these days we're using macro standard templates to kind of guide us along as we break things up, figure out the different layers, the different elements in each organ system that are contributing to the diagnosis as a whole. These layers here ended up um, 
being a uh, running shoe that, that was seen from both, I called it frontal and lateral views. Um, so it's, um, it's something that I, I think we have as artists and people looking at art, um, a lot of overlap with our daily work. Another area where this takes place is negative space um, or thinking about art. Artists often choose to maybe not paint on a certain area of canvas or to have a lot of white. For radiology, similar kind of thing where you're looking, what is not there that should be there? What is missing from the report? Um, what is a finding that should be there? What is something that should be there normally, but it is not there? This is kind of those classic cases. Probably most people have seen this, but if not, we're missing the clavicles there. It can be really hard to perceive the things that are not there. And that's something also that in art we actively think about. Why did the artist make that decision of not to paint over that area? So that attention to detail can make a difference in how the whole piece is built up. When we're looking at art, um, what's happening? Uh, it actually turns out there has been um, some study of this with fMRI. Um, and there's been study with um, everyday patients and also people who've had traumatic brain injuries. Um, and there actually are increased connections that we can see with uh, observation of art um, in these groups and also even more so with art creation, which um, is something just to keep in mind that maybe not just observing art, but actually creating art could be ev even more benefit uh, to us all. There are other areas um, but I'm not going to delve into much here um, regarding the arts and humanities that could possibly help us too in radiology, like in psychology, thinking about gestalt theory, um, examining ways that we have um, as humans um, that lead us to make errors, um, like the shock and approach um, that we can kind of fall into. Um, so stepping back and looking at some of the knowledge in these other fields can help us understand how some of these individual things we're looking at, how they fit into the whole pattern before really jumping to a conclusion. I touched on earlier, art um, really lives in that area of uncertainty. For radiology, we're often criticized for our degrees of uncertainty. You know, the finding is sometimes maybe probably this, most likely, um, and that can be frustrating for clinicians, right? Um, and Maybe it can be a little bit difficult for us too. It doesn't always feel good to put our report where you can't say, hey, this is the answer. Um, so we have to go home with that and we have to be able to live with that knowledge that we're not gonna have an answer or maybe this is something that's never gonna go to surgery. We're never gonna know what the answer is. So learning about the art and living in that area of uncertainty with the arts could help us as we, in radiology, try to deal with those feelings that we often just kind of shove down and just ignore. Um, even though it can feel not great sometimes to not know what the answer is. So exploration of the arts can help us su support these other areas that I think in radiology, because we're so busy, we do tend to kind of shove away sometimes. So empathy, and I mean, empathy for our patients, but also empathy for each other. Um, you know, we also grew up at times, we have to have that degree of understanding, be able to live in somebody else's shoes, empathy for our technologists, our staff, for uh, everyone we're interacting with, because um, it can be really easy when we're busy um, to uh, neglect those types of skills, skills of communication, um, having some time to think about ethics and how we are supporting uh, patient-centered care. So the arts are one way for those of us um, in medical education to approach some other core competencies, not just medical knowledge and our skills, um, but to get at empathy. And, and along with that, that's also self-empathy. People don't like to talk about this, but besides burnout, physician suicide uh, is a huge problem these days. It's greater than twice the rate of the typical population, the rest of the population. So this is a big deal. Um, we need to be able to um, allow ourselves a space to be not perfect all the time and to have mechanisms to deal with grief. Um, uh, this is a, a sort of personal short story. Um, one of my friends, colleagues, and actually my previous program director, um, Dr. Larry Holder, who trained at Vanderbilt. You can see um, the old photo of him with the mustache in the corner. Um, he uh, passed away uh, very suddenly of a GBM, and it was something that was just shocking to everyone in the community. I was good friends with him and his uh, partner, Randy. And um, after that, Randy, 
uh, had me paint this very large scale. He wanted to abstract work um, as a way to help us both process that grief and also establish our connection. And so he could have something in his home that was a way to help him commemorate things. It can be a way, you know, it can be a way for us to work through things that happen in our communities, um, tragedies. Uh, I'm a, a runner, as I mentioned, and I happened to be at the Boston Marathon in 2013 when there was the bombing. That was really traumatic, of course, for the Boston community, but also was very traumatic for the running community as a whole. Uh, so all of us who decided to go back in 2014 after that event had to figure out ways to work through that. And uh, for me, um, creating a painting um, was one way to process that. It's not always sad, of course. Um, art can be very joyful. It can support well-being. It's something that we can integrate into some of these activities that we uh, are trying to create in all of our departments um, to uh, help with engagement um, and to bring us back into shared spaces, especially since we are also spread out now. It can be a way to connect with others, also to have some quiet moments. This is a watercolor of my sister at home. She loves to read. Um, it doesn't always have to be um, direct interaction. It can be quiet moments like that. If those things don't seem quite right for you, I'd also challenge you to maybe look at it in a different way. Um, can you have an artistic mindset as you're working through things throughout the day, where sometimes just pausing and appreciating the beauty that's there at the workstation and our images can really help support a sense of um, accomplishment with the daily work and just pleasure in looking at images. Um, or intellectual pressure, um, the beauty of a diagnosis, or maybe it saves a patient from a biopsy or a surgery that's unnecessary, and how there's a certain beauty in that, um, that I think sometimes we just are working so quickly that we just don't have the time to pause and appreciate those things. So take a moment to really notice um, how, you know, when a splash of paint falls on your arm, right, similar things happen at work, how cool that is. Um, so you may see um, something that's an artifact on the image and it actually ends up creating something beautiful. Um, but often we rush through those moments. Other major efforts um, going on in radiology right now, of course, um, are we are um, all trying to work through how we can better support diversity, equity, and inclusion in radiology. It's a space where we uh, know that we've not had great success um, uh, these days. We've not changed much as far as numbers of women in radiology underrepresented minorities, there's still a lot of work to be done in this space. The arts are one way to get at that, to really celebrate diverse backgrounds and to make people feel comfortable in our spaces, to bring the community into our areas. This is based off a photograph from uh, Mardi Gras. Uh, and to have some times where we can have shared experiences and connection. So uh, like this group um, took a um, group of residents to a fine arts gallery, had fine arts sessions, which yes, did have impact on skills of observation perception, but there were some other benefits, which actually included just having a shared experience in the novel space outside of work. You know, not just like a regular or happy hour, but doing something different. And people found that was actually really engaging, just as far as connecting with other people in the program. And this may sound a little bit silly, but this is actually really critical, I think, right now for radiology and for looking ahead in the future. Um, as Americans, loneliness is a big, big problem. Um, the Surgeon General has brought this up. Uh, this was in the New York Times uh, just yesterday. Um, there have been a number of uh, essays and op-eds about this. And I think in radiology, whether we recognize it or want to talk about it or not, loneliness is a big factor um, now and going forward as we're splitting off into these groups, um, sitting in our read rooms at home or um, is scattered across large territories. So could the arts be something to help bring us together at times so we still feel connected to each other um, and do it in a way where we feel a connection to our community? Uh, and Nashville, um, one of the ways we've done this is we have, uh, the past few years, we've had a week um, that we call DEI Week, and we have various events. Some of them are arts-related events um, as a way to, um, to have some space to talk about these things and also to have some enjoyable time together. Uh, one of the most surprising things to me uh, over the past year or so when I've been in this role is the number of people, radiologists, who've reached out to me from overseas, um, not just in Europe, but um, Turkey, um, South America, Central America. People have a real need for this um, in their work. And it's not just in the U.S. 
Uh, and some things like the arts really are global. We might not speak the same language, but a lot of the visual material really does translate. You can build a community across borders with the arts this way, where you can share um, some things that we all enjoy in a very easy way. Um, one of uh, the uh, interns right now that I'm working with had this great idea to explore the uh, relatively new area of AI art and bring it into radiology since we're all in front of computers all day and you don't have to be an artist to make AI art. So, um, so we found some other um, folks who are interested in exploring the space and we're starting a new community. Um, welcome everyone to take a look at it. Please consider joining. Um, we'd love folks to contribute art, but also if you just enjoy looking at other people's creations, that's great too. And this is something that it doesn't take much time, but can add just a little bit of fun to your day. The arts can be, of course, a means of communication. Sometimes it's easier to communicate um, things, say, about a procedure with a patient by making a little drawing, or sometimes with our uh, colleagues, our surgical colleagues, say. Um, or incorporating art into our lectures and conferences can actually be quite enjoyable. It can be a lot of fun to delve into medical illustration. If you have any interest at all, I highly recommend this radiographics article. Um, some really great examples of how to go about that. Um, it doesn't, again, have to be serious. Um, you can use comics, it can be a little bit fun as well. Um, so art can really help us um, in education in these multiple ways. And looking forward, I think it can really help us as a field, um, having a mindset where we're very curious about things like artists, um, artists share information with each other. They share um, various uh, ways of doing things, ways of working, um, often working on multiple projects at the same time. And radiology would benefit from that as well. Um, so working across institutions, yes, but also within departments. Um, I learned so many things from my residents and medical students uh, that, you know, if, if we have a closed mind, I think um, yeah, we don't uh, learn some of these things. Uh, and with art, that's kind of the assumption is that you're sharing all the time. So this is kind of one way that we can reach that level of problem solving that I think we need to move the field forward, especially given the shortage of radiologists we have and for the foreseeable future. Uh, the arts can help us with problem solving because really art creation, especially is all about problem solving. That's what I think I'm doing when I have a blank canvas, I basically have a problem. Canvas isn't exactly a problem, but the problem is trying to convey whatever it is I want to convey um, when the canvas is blank. And when you're creating art, you have to be okay with experimenting, trying things. Uh, it's an area where it's normal to have a, a certain degree of psychological safety so you can push through. You might have an accident like I did with that piece that ends up being a whole series. I didn't intend to make um, splatter, it was just actually an accident, but it ended up being a whole series um, that I didn't really see coming. Making art it tends to be very iterative. You have an idea, you keep trying, you keep erasing, putting different layers on, one layer doesn't work, you don't like that color, and you have to keep working. So just like when we're working on projects with innovation, engineering, we have to keep trying. The arts um, really are very same, similar in that type of way. I was out hiking uh, near Mount Rainier with my friend Nicole. By accident, she somehow ended up taking this image that had kind of like a double exposure, like superimposed. I thought it was kind of neat. So that inspired me to make a uh, very unusual painting of Mount Rainier uh, based on that. So some things that seem like they might be mistakes can actually lead to innovation in the arts and I think also for our field too. But we need to be okay with making those mistakes to get there. And that's something we're all used to being at the top of the class and so on as we progress through training that I think is really hard. People don't like to admit to it, um, attendings as well. Um, so having some activities with the arts where we are not necessarily the best artist or the best observer of art when we're uh, we have to feel okay with maybe making mistakes. Um, that can be helpful to us in radiology. I learned a lot of new things, um, including how to um, ship paintings um, by rolling them up across the country um, because I had to um, from my hobby. And I, I think that kind of sense of adventure with the arts can really apply to a lot of things we do um, in radiology and in medicine. So getting back to a few practical things here as we finish up. When we want to engage with the arts, of course, we can do it in a very observational type of mode, going to galleries. This is a recent um, trip we took to our uh, fine arts gallery um, 
um, by the university um, just across the street from us. It can be structured um, types of events. Um, BTS, visual thinking strategies, is a very well-known one, or you can connect with a um, museum curator, um, somebody who's a museum educator, and they can help um, guide you through looking at art. Um, it could be a more of an interactive type experience out in the community. You could uh, create art yourself. Again, that could be a solo thing, but it could also be with groups of people. It can be a very collaborative type of thing. Maybe you would want to explore a little bit of medical illustration. That's kind of a practical thing for those of us in radiology. Or maybe you want to take it in a different way. The images we look at in radiology could inspire you to make something that's very creative. There are a number of radiologists out there who take the images that we look at uh, and make some art of their own. Uh, and again, for wellness-related activities, it's a great thing to do um, where you can kind of get at a lot of these things that are important to us in radiology um, in these events. Uh, drawing sessions related to this um, doesn't have to take much time, but it is a way to have um, a little bit of wellness activity embedded um, in a curriculum. We also can get at ideas of how to perceive things, how to look at things. These collaborative drawings are not a drawing from any one person. They're actually from the whole group because people rotate around the table. Um, so it doesn't have to single people out as to if they have artistic talents or not. The describe um, and draw um, exercise, which always uh, leads to a lot of laughs. I don't have time for that today, but I'd be happy to um, tell anyone who's interested about how that works um, uh, because it's, it's actually something that people are um, pretty much uh, universally appreciative of what's actually do it. Uh, if visual arts maybe um, don't speak to you, there are a lot of things um, in theater arts that can be really helpful on the education side. A number of things that we need to make sure that we embed in our training um, programs, like having difficult conversations with patients, reaction, contrast reaction simulations, procedural complication um, discussions, that we can do in a way um, through role playing. Literature writing speaks to some people, um, you know, book clubs or writing exercises can be a great way to have time for self-reflection. Um, poetry, there's a, a very active um, ACR medical student group and they actually had a poetry night um, that was quite well attended. Uh, and for our spaces as well, I started out by mentioning how bland our spaces. There may be some spots, it doesn't have to be much, where this is my little meeting spot and put my door on the Zoom call, um, where we can add a little bit of fun um, to our spaces. So ways to encourage this um, at a department level, uh, we have a art gallery space. Um, we also have some art mini grants to um, give people some funds if they want to do something unusual, like one of our former residents and fellows, um, Fadi here, used our 3D printer um, to make this um, fairly artistic um, lamp. And the gestures here can be very small, can be very simple things. Um, some of it is just about like having the space and having some tools to hang up work. Um, so we have a conference room that we call our Radiology Art Gallery. And uh, we have rotating exhibits that we've been changing out about once per year. Anyone can submit art on um, the department, so we have residents, medical students, our fellows, um, staff, as well as family members. Um, everyone is welcome to submit. We've got gotten submissions from a whole range um, of people that way. Uh, we even uh, got requests to have some sculpture. Um, so we bought some pedestals and um, we're able to expand so we could have a, uh, a little gallery opening. So just a way to bring people together again since folks are so spread out. For our spaces too, we can use art to make them more inclusive. Really, this is a great way to bring the community inside our spaces, recognize the culture that we have in our areas. Uh, this is a, a large scale painting I made for our radiation oncology program in Seattle. It was based off of a photograph of patients' hands um, and uh, submitted by one of the staff members. Uh, one of the best examples of this uh, is at MGH. Um, this is uh, led by Dr. Chande, um, who has um, gotten a whole team of people together um, where he has um, artwork from the community um, that they have been able to bring into these spaces, into radiology clinics. Um, you can just um, look for some of the videos on YouTube, just type in um, people's heart and it should pop right up. They're really cool little um, videos of those spaces. 
We're doing something similar at Vanderbilt. Our medical students here have been awesome um, at moving these initiatives forward. Um, Sophie Wyatt and Mike have done a lot of work where they have actually gotten works. They've um, checked out works of art from the National Public Library and patients in the rehab hospital have been given a catalog of those works and the patients can select a piece of art and the students will come and bring that art. So while the patients are rehabbing, they have a, a special piece of art in their uh, patient room um, throughout their stay. We are expanding this so we can have our own collection. So we've been um, having a couple calls for art this summer. We're gonna have an exhibit of those works and then we're going to introduce those into the patient catalog so patients can select those. So finishing up here, and I just want to briefly have you think about is there anything that you can take away from here? It doesn't have to be big. It could be maybe decorating the spaces that you're in. Um, taking a moment now and then just to appreciate how beautiful some of the images are. Um, thinking about ways that looking at art, um, looking at all of the art images can also help you being better at appreciating things, perceiving things in our daily work. Taking time to have those moments of connection with others or connection with yourself. Um, it doesn't have to be serious. This is from our, one of our high school art events that we attended, so it was from the radiology group. Um, and um, how it can allow us to really connect with each other across these spaces now that we're so spread out um, and to really appreciate the diversity that we have in our departments, our communities, figure out ways to help us grow um, and really continue that process as we move forward um, into the unknown that radiology is these days. So that is where I'll end here. I have a bunch of references if anyone's curious about those. And I want to say thank you so much. It's just been a pleasure to be here. I also know it's getting late, so I totally understand it. Yes. What, what was the impetus for developing? having a director of art, how did that? Uh, so that, that's an excellent question. Um, so Dr. Armory uh, felt like uh, we needed somebody to actually move things forward because what ends up happening is, you know, there were a number of people who were like, oh, this is like kind of a, a cool idea, but um, when it comes down to it, nothing gets moved forward if there's not somebody who um, who's sort of responsible for it, I guess you could say. So, so that's why he wanted an actual named position for that. Curious, on campus, have you done collaborations between radiology and uh, art schools on campus? And so Excellent question. Um, so talking about collaboration between um, us, like us in radiology or medicine with um, the Vanderbilt University Arts Department. Um, there, there have been just a few small things up to this point, like one-time events, that kind of thing. I think that's a space actually that we really could do a lot more with. So yeah, it's still on my list. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, yeah, okay. I just want to say this is a pre presentation. I mean, so I'm in R1, and I think I really resonated with the part where I'm currently in my class with three. As a brand new learner of radiology, like, everything that we're seeing is new, everything that we're trying to describe is new, and most of it's wrong. Okay? So, <laughs> um, but, I mean, I don't know, I was thinking about it. I like that slide where it said, like, you know, there's just components to art and learning how to describe art and components is like really resonating with. I don't know, something that I see during the dark of the work for us. Yeah. One of the things that I've recently I've been getting into is that AI art was kind of like you know, rich on that one slide. So the platform like Midjourney was able to do that and do the phone. You are telling the computer program, the kind of inputting area that you want to do with that art. And I feel like um, sometimes it produces a result that is like kind of what I want to see, and other times it doesn't. And I, I find that intersection really interesting between my daily kind of work life and you know making artists and hobbies. So. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it is fascinating. I found the same thing with um, AI art too, is it'll spit out products. You're like, that's not exactly what I intended. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, Dr. Burgess, again, thank you for coming.
here and to recognize it as our first uh, speaker of the uh, season. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad you came out. Um, I was curious if you could maybe um, share with us, as you all are doing all this work to really engage and really keep it together, especially on well and seeing the AI, are you able to make any connection in terms of how the health of the department is changing over time? So we just got, for example, our score survey, and so we got some work in these areas. Yeah. And I'm just wondering how something like this is impacting this or impacting this field in the community in ways that are really necessary. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, um, excellent. Yeah, so the question is about how would we actually measure some of the effects of these initiatives. Um, so actually uh, in 2021, um, uh, I and um, a couple of my helpers, um, we administered a survey um, to the department and uh, it's a really short survey, but it was to get at are these um, small scale things that we're doing, how are they impacting how you're feeling about work, your connections to the department, DI, all the initiatives that we have going on. Um, so that was survey number one. So we got a baseline data. We actually just ran survey number two a couple years later. So I have yet to actually get that out, but we need to sit down and process that. We have our date to look at that actually later this month. So I'll let you know. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. So um, from a, just as a, uh, if somebody creates a piece of art, uh, has there been cases where they commercialize that to the point where like, yeah, yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, so we haven't gotten to that point um, where uh, royalties are coming into play. Um, but I do know that there are very um, detailed rules about this. And, um, and that is something that we do have people who can advise us if we get to that point, because it's already written in there. One question as well. Um, so, part in general, there's a lot of science pieces inside the crustacean, some that's a little bit more honest. So, and I think the one thing, one piece that kind of made me feel a little bit more comfortable in trying to put more than that stuff was that one with the fellowship class on 2010. Um, but with any art initiative, I think that with people being very busy with work, and I know that you've all that in your presentation, do you have any strategies in terms of trying to get more people who are more novice or have essentially no experience in some of these art forms to get engaged in a lot of these programs to kind of push. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so uh, we've kind of gone at that a couple ways. So we do have um, a few things that are embedded just within our curriculum. So it's kind of there for everyone as far as um, uh, for, the, for the residents. We have um, the quarterly art wellness sessions. So it's kind of there, people are there for a new conference. We usually have um, a little bit of food or, or some other um, uh, item available that's a little bit enticing for people to actually come and participate for that that reason alone. But um, uh, we also have some folks who are um, interested in connecting outside of work. We had a lot of people who wanted to get together more actually after we were finally allowed to after the pandemic. So we had a natural kind of boost that way. So people were actually kind of excited about doing some things um, out in the community um, because of that. Because you're right, it's definitely um, a little bit more challenging. But if you have um, I don't want to say social pressure, but you know, that kind of thing where like enough people are going, usually you're going to get more people to kind of take along too. Yeah. Anything else? Absolutely. Thank you. Right. Um, <laughs>